have a big enough following or whatever. Something's happening with it. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good afternoon. Awkward double hand wave. Just waving for both of us. I will now wave. <laughs> no more awkward double hand waving. Oh, God, I'm so tired. Ugh. Tell them your story. Oh, I do have a story. I'm eating, I'm eating sour. Being sour patch kids over here. It's not annoying at all. I know. I think that's I'm the last one. My headphones. The last one. All right. Well, I think they changed the flavors of these. It tastes like grapefruit. I don't think they had grapefruit before. Anyway. They're probably trying to say that for you, too. Right. Real grapefruit juice. flavor. Real, real juice. Never real mind. Juice real flavors. juice has all kinds of fructose in it. Anyway. Right. Anyway. So we were awoken. Wakened. Wakened. Hey, Terry. Um, I woke up at 3.30 to my boyfriend running around frantically throwing clothes on. And I'm like, what is happening? And he's like, uh, chimney fire at one of our rental properties. And I'm like, what is happening? So anyway, long story short, turned out to be just fine. Um, no big deal. It was, it was a big deal. It's chimney fire. But um, there was just, um, we had the chimney cleaned out recently. And so it wasn't um, a huge chimney fire, like hasn't been cleaned out in a long time. And there's a ton of creosote in there. It was just like in one part of the stovepipe, it kind of catches the smoke. So there's a big bend. And I guess that was starting to catch on fire, this little bend in the stovepipe. So anyway, so the little flames were licking out of the stovepipe connectors. Um, after she stoked the fire at 3 a.m., she got up and threw more wood on the fire. And then all of a sudden, instead of fire just down here, there was fire coming out of the stovepipe. <laughs> Jesus. Terrifying. Anyway, so I stayed home, made up the spare bedroom, assuming that there would be uh, actual huge fires and no house left and all that. But um, turns out that she was really smart and damped down the stove and cut off the airflow and the fire, the flames went away, but she didn't know if there were still flames inside the chimney or what. So by the time Kathy got over there, the fire department was there. And I kept peeking out my window, second story window, see if I could see flames shooting up because it's literally... Our rental house is about a half a mile straight east of us. Anyway, so there's no weird lights or anything. So I was like, okay, God, hopefully it's okay. So God bless her. She, I was like, come over and stay tonight at least for the next two hours until you have to go to class. She's like, nah, I'm fine. I'm like, oh, God bless you. You're way more chill about this than I ever will be. So anyway, she's a tough cookie. She's like a 25-year-old young woman. She's got her... Got her head on straight anyway. So that's the deal. So I'm a little sour patch kid at two o'clock in the afternoon kind of day. Keep my blood sugar up. It's really incredible that we have survived parenthood. <laughs> this is what I thought about when this morning when you're like, I was up at 3.30 and, I, and then I went to bed back to bed at five and slept for a couple more hours. And I thought, man, I remember when I had babies, like it's like up at, 11 and then 1 30 and then 3 30 and then I still went to work all day long. I know it's like I don't know why we let men do anything No offense to the men that are gonna watch this include in pregnant but Terry's the only one here So uh, between the ladies here. Yeah, no, I'm sure no one else will watch this later. Yeah, right <laughs> uh, So anyway, sorry, that's a little bit about what's going on with us today. Yeah, so we got some announcements um, announcements announcements. Go Meg will be in Sioux Falls on March mm -hmm. 6th. That's a new announcement next Wednesday. Yes um, Also in pier oh, as it were she's going to be on the on the TV uh, That's why she's going I am gonna be on the TV um, Hello land in the morning those of you. I think we even get to Kelloland land out here, don't we? Well, or there's Kelloland Kelo Kelo rapid land. city and then um, there's Kelloland land Sioux Falls and so I think that it's doesn't it translate show the whatever. same stuff at the same time I don't think so anyway she's gonna be on the TV in Sioux Falls but we'll share the link out after it goes live so you can see it yep um so I'll be in pier on the fifth and then in Sioux Falls on the sixth if any of you or if you know anyone who would like to have a drink or what have you let me know and even better if you know companies in Sioux Falls that Meg could come talk to you over lunch or talk about culture types with or all the cool stuff that we do. That would be awesome because then we could, uh, we have, uh, we're always looking to expand how many people we can help. So if you know companies that need us, let us know. Also, wine drinking is good too. Also that. Mm -hmm. um, 
what other new things? You're going to be in New York now in March. Mm -hmm. All next week I got PM classes in Rapid. And then, um, yeah, the first week, the first couple days in uh, March 11th, I'll be in New York City. So again, if you're in New York or know companies in New York or people in New York you'd want to connect us with, we'd love to do that. I'm going a day early, so I'll be all the, the 11th all day, I'll be in the city and available for meetings. I'm going to start booking that out. <clears throat> so if you know anybody, let us know. Um, and then the 12th, I'm doing the bestseller TV um, interview. And then I'll be in Brookings on the 15th, where I'll be giving a talk to the geography conference. Not geologists, Not geology. just to be clear. Geography. Uh, I, got my P, my, I got my bachelor's degree from SDSU in geography, and they're having their 50th. Um, convention, geography convention, which is a student run organization, student run event. And I actually ran it for the 25th. That's a long time ago. What, are, what number are we on now? This is 50. It's the 50th. So I ran the 25th. So, man, when you were well, 14 years old, I know. I was you. such a baby. I yeah, was such a prodigy in college, incredible. so young. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Today, with the no sleeping, I, look, I can convince myself it's been 25 years. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to be speaking in Brookings on, on Friday. And so I actually have a, another, an extra day in Brookings too. So I'll probably be meeting with the Board of Trustees president, a couple other people. So if you know folks out there, also let us know. Um, and then I'm going to Vegas pretty much right after that, the week of the 5th, 16, 17, 18. I'll be down in, at a Hero Club meeting in Vegas. So that will be an awesome opportunity to meet amazing hero club people investors and ceos and that sort of thing so we didn't say what you're going to be in new york for rachel is going to be oh, on yeah. c-suite tv bestseller tv so if you're ever flying united in probably not for another four months or whatever their months, wrap yeah. up time is but um if you're flying united you'll be able to watch rachel on bestseller c-suite bestseller tv yeah <laughs> on cool. the on the airplane and Meg's going to be giving a big talk in front of 150-ish yeah. ish CEOs down in Clearwater, Florida on the exact same day. So it's going to be a big... Oh, I hadn't thought about all that yet. It's going to be a big, big day for uh, Rose Group. We're going to be all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're having to split uh, split up, although it's more fun to do things together. But just got to we've got things to do. So, And then she's going to be hanging out in Florida. So, again, if you know Florida people... Uh, Clearwater, Tampa, right area? Yep. Mm -hmm. So she'll be down there. Although her kids, who are getting to go for a spring break trip with her, are saying that she doesn't get to work while she's there. So. Well, drinking doesn't necessarily qualify as work. Work. We better not, because. <laughs> or maybe it should, because that justifies. Yeah. A lot what we do. Yeah. So. Um, I guess another thing, um, on, at the end of March, uh, I will be keynoting at the, um, women's second annual women's business conference in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Yeah. I know most of the folks on here are West River. However, if you have some, um, East River ladies that are awesome business people or know about business or, or aspire about, to be business people. Yeah. Um, they should definitely go to the conference. There are still some spots open, but not very many. So mm -hmm. now is definitely the time to sign up. I think um, they've only got like, I don't know, maybe five tables left um, to fill. So going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you are so inclined to go to Aberdeen at the end of March, who would be, I don't know, um, <laughs> then you should come because it's going to be me and I'm funny. And she's on stage for two, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, right? Yeah, for two and a half hours. Oh, good all lord. Total. Don't drink, start drinking too early or you'll be tired. I won't drink at all, probably, till, that, till afterwards. Yeah. Actually, I'll probably just come home. That's right. Because be... it's a Friday. Yeah, you don't want to stay in Aberdeen longer than you have to. That's just true. No offense to the Groton people on the show. None. Deb. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, Deb. Okay, well, I think that's probably... Mm -hmm. it for announcements yep. um the poll questions today are around hashtag my tribe my um, tribe how do you have a community how do you build a community how do you feel good in that community why do you have a community why is it important why is it important how do you gut check to make sure those are the right people around you um i was having a conversation just earlier today with bob turnis our cro hi bob and we were talking about um this is 
just hang in with me. This is related. Okay. I'm related. It'll actually yeah. make sense eventually. So we were talking about getting people in an organization, either up or out, um, kind of more from an HR perspective and talking about, you know, us talking with potential clients about helping them through their issues. A lot of times when we work with, with potential clients, um, their issues are around a person or a group of people that are toxic or have become toxic to the organization because the change wasn't managed well. And so sometimes if those people are so toxic that they can't stay in the company, then it's out instead of up. Of course, you give them every opportunity to manage that well and whatever. Um, but sometimes, and I have more, more than once, helped people out of an organization, not as a consultant, well, as a consultant, more as a HR manager. Um, and I n not ever one time did with those people that I helped out of the company, and I'm not talking about just everybody you terminate is out. I mean, people who really are not fit, they're not in the right role within the organization, um, or they, they don't have a desire to be a leader and they've been put in a leadership role because people really like them or respect them because they do their job well or for whatever reasons. Um, those people are usually, you can actually see the relief in their eyes when they are removed from a role uh, or an organization that they are not aligned with. And so um, my point in saying all of that is I think the very first and important thing about your community is knowing who should be in it and who shouldn't be in it and being really honest with yourself about who those people are. Um, I've had major changes um, in the last, I guess now it's been five-ish years in my life. Um, and I've lost some friends um, that were really, really good friends, like from childhood. Um, and I lost track of some friends for a while who were really good friends. And I reconnected with some people who were well, my really my one of my best friends. Um, so don't feel bad. You'll, you'll still feel bad, but try to be thoughtful about feeling bad or why you feel bad when people leave your, your life. There's really almost always a reason for it. It doesn't mean that they're, sometimes it means they're not a good person for you to be around or that they're a bad person. Most of the time, it just means that they're not the person for you to be around at that point in your life. Hi, Carrie. Not you, Carrie. We're not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> she just joined. I don't know. It's not a commentary. But I think before you think about that or worry about that too much, I think you have to think about what what your community, what you want to achieve for yourself and are the people that are around you going to support that or not support that? So, um, we always say that if there's, if you're, if there's five millionaires in a room, then you're the sixth one. If there's five people that eat at McDonald's for dinner every night, you're the sixth one. If there's five people that ride their bike, road bike 50 miles or climb every weekend, guess what? You're probably the sixth one. Cause we tend to hang out with people that do the same things that we do. And at work, I'll mm -hmm. add this one. Yep. And at work, if you're hanging out in a room of five people who are doing nothing but bitching about how bad things are, you're the sixth one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And so that's something to really think about is what are the people, who do you surround yourself with? And you've, and you've seen this socially, right? Um, the people that like to play um, Dungeons and Dragons. There's Dungeons and Dragons people. Those are those people. And they, that's what they love to do. And, and that's great. There's no good or bad here. It's just who you want to be and who you are. And it might be where you want to become, who you want to become. A lot of us are, you know, the, the basic rule sort of about life is you want more life, right? You want to learn more. You want to grow more. You want to develop your skills. You want to try new things. And um, regardless of culture type, so if you're a stabilizer, you might not go skydiving for the first time, or you might not quit your job and go out on your own right away, but you find other ways to grow and change and be a better, better specialist or a better welder or whatever the hell you're doing. And so if you hang out with, to Meg's point, the best people that you know, they're doing the things you want to do, they're going to lift you up to their level. If you're hanging around with the people that are struggling, and that can't get things done, or that they're not perform, they're not not high performers. Guess what? They're gonna drag you down. 
And so you really need to be aware of who you're hanging out with and how their energy affects what you want to do and become. It's really important. It's one of the reasons, for instance, that um, we joined the Hero Club because in Spearfish, we want our company to grow into a multi-million dollar company. And that's just not something that people in Spearfish, other business owners, really talk about. It seems like ridiculous. And so we're trying to, I mean, that's, and so to, in order to get around other people with million dollar businesses, multi-million dollar businesses, I joined the hero club early. Meg also joined. Um, but it's, we put our company in the middle of all of these other companies that are the same kind of company that we want to be. And that not only helps us get our head around what it looks like. Oh, who's talking? Just me if I hang out with you guys. Yeah, heck, well, yes. you're smarter than us already, Terry. Sorry, Terry says, does this mean if I hang out with you guys on here, I can be as smart as you two? Absolutely. You're way smarter than us in a lot of ways. This is true. But all of us cool kids hang out together. That's, That's right. why you're on here. That's right. That's right. And so it's really important to be aware of um, who's, in, who's in your circle. And, and not like what team you're in, because you don't get to choose that sometimes. But it's more about who you choose to spend time with when you can. And you want to really hang out with people that are going to help you be, be the person you want to be instead of um, you them bringing you down, I guess, is the premise of the whole idea. Yeah. And I think it's a really important to a couple things. One, gut check. Everybody's like, well, how do you, how do you know who you should hang out with or well, not? That was a, that was a question. Um, <laughs> man, if you're the, the best way to do it, if you want a practical tool, is to journal. So when you're around a certain well, group of you, people, journaling. oh yeah, I did this. I did oh. this. When you're around a certain group of people or around a certain thing, maybe it's an activity because a lot of times we're actually driven by activities and then that leads us to people. And so whatever activity you're around, um, write down how, how did you feel when you left that activity? Did you feel good? Did you feel exhausted? Um, did you feel overwhelmed or anxious or super happy and excited? Uh, and then start to keep track of that for 10 or 15 days or months or however long it takes until you have those things occur enough that you could track it and see what it looks like. Um, I used to talk every day with a dear friend of mine and um, we would commiserate about different things that were miserable in our lives, but it was mostly just a joke. It wasn't like, it was like the weather, like, oh, for God's sakes, if it could ever, it will never get warm here again kind of thing. And whatever other things we like to joke about that were miserable. And then I actually started going through a really miserable part of my life that was real miserable. Um, and I could not talk to that person every day anymore because that like engaging in that conversation hurt. Um, I needed to surround myself with people who were ridiculously optimistic and positive, even about things that didn't matter to me. Um, so really it's about a gut check. How do things make you feel? And then once you've gut checked those people and you've started to maybe limit your time with a certain person, a group of people and increase your time with others, um, start thinking about it. So those relationships, relationships really yeah mm. that's that's a belfish thing actually <laughs> no that's a normal thing <laughs> <laughs> oh Sorry, that was mean rural south dakota humor um relationships those relationships uh are not even even the, the good ones and when they're good in the right time and place and serving you they still aren't always going to feel perfect. And that's when you can start thinking about what culture types are people. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you're at a point in your life where you're really being, really trying to be, um, or not trying to be, but maybe you're in innovation phase. You've had a big change in your life and you're in innovation phase and you, uh, and, and let's say you're on the bottom half of the graph. So let's say you're order tolerant. Um, and some of your chaos tolerant friends who are super motivating and really supportive are like you should do this and you could do that and you could do this and this and this and this and this so your fixer friend is like oh hey let me fix everything about your life right now because you're so uncertain and as a stabilizer or organizer you're thinking I know I'm in a state of innovation but stop talking to me you are fixing problems I don't have don't want to think about right now we just came to have a beer or whatever it is and so be mindful that those people are seeing seeing your life from their perspective, not yours, and that they're really just trying to help 
Um, so even when you find your tribe or your right group of people, it's okay and normal if they still drive you a little bit nuts in different ways. I, lo I love you. I love you too. <laughs> That's a good point. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. But honestly, the, the thing that I love about the community, now, if you're an independent or you are an organizer, you are on the self-driven side of the graph. So you might not even actually feel the need to really be surrounded by people, right? Because that's not what you, that's not your thing. But um, at the same time, I think you exposing yourself to new ideas and ways that you can improve is always great and it doesn't mean that you have to like be with them all the time like this hero club we meet three or four times a year and it's for me it's whenever i get with these incredible ceos i just constantly am like trying to be open to absorbing and just sponging up all the information and so i don't have to i don't see those guys very much i don't see the same people every time but it's it's the attitude of the group and whenever I'm in it, I just learn, learn, learn all the time. And that's what I really love about it. Um, the other, the other piece of it is to what Meg sort of started at is sometimes that, uh, people don't work long term. Um, I'm very lucky. Carrie is on the, on the call, Carrie Ranky. We have been friends since God, I think a junior in high school. I'm not even over adding up the years. Frankly, it's been a long time, decades. And, even though we have very different lives, she um, ha she's done incredible things. She has a daughter uh, with special needs and ma a Make-A-Wish kid, and I just like she blows my mind about how she has managed to navigate the healthcare system and all the crazy stuff that you, that takes. And so, even though we have totally different lives, and and she lives in a different place, and we're doing different kind of careers. She has, she blows my mind in so many ways about how she's dealt with that and all the things that she's managed, that she manages. And so there's, you don't always have to align yourself with people like, just like you or who you think you want to be. It's more about enriching your life with people that can help you grow and see things from a different perspective. So you certainly don't want to become a, one of the wives, Stepford wives. Stepford They're wives, like, yeah. you're all the same person next soccer to each other. Moms. Yeah. Like, we're soccer moms, by the way. Well, we are soccer, soccer moms, moms, but we're the cool soccer moms. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. We're the shitty soccer moms that like don't think about, you know, water bottles and shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I feel, I do pretty good about the water bottle thing. Do you? Uh, you're a better soccer mom than me. Well, man, they're freaking old enough. They That's right. Their own You're ten. Water figure, bottle. figure it out. Accountability. That's right. Figure it out. So for me, it's about um, and like we're brainstorming all the time about messaging and how we can reach people and who we want to reach and and do we want to go up against these big you know these big um, big people these really big companies yeah these really big companies they're like billion dollar consultancies right do we want to go up against them. And so it's great to have a bunch of people in the room that you can say, what do you guys think about this? Or how do you think about that? And then just getting out of your own head, right? A lot of times we get sort of trapped into uh, being in our own head about stuff and kind of spin, spin, spin. So it's always great to sort of look beyond what's in your own head or your own small team and find out what people think about that. And that's another really amazing benefit of having Having a tribe. Are you looking up our questions? I'm trying to. My phone is just trying to fitful today. Yeah. Oh. So anyway, so that's another really great benefit of having a tribe of people that you respect. They respect you. They understand where you at, where you're at. They can play off, play off from different perspectives and angles. And so I just love it. But I'm a fixer. I'm a. I love working in a team environment. So that does that changes the perspective a little bit. Yeah, I'm an independent. Um, she's just fine with her own opinion, generally speaking. <laughs> well, it's usually right. <laughs> if I stay in my own world, my opinion is always right. That's right. If I never get out of my own head. I, I really, really love to have insight from other people, but I am, I'm really not good. It is not a preference or a priority in my brain to seek it out. Like Rachel seeks out opinions from other people. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I know I'm not the smartest. Just saying. No, it's because you're a fixer. Dude, help me make my point. <laughs> Quit trying to make me sound like an asshole. <laughs> Come on. So, Rachel. Uh, like it's because I'm a fixer. Thank it's true. It's true. Um, Rachel seeks out 
she she likes to have a conversation just to have a conversation about gee mm -hmm. what do you think about uh we were watching this documentary about have you heard about these well of course flat earth people that believe oh, the yes. earth is flat oh yeah we're watching a documentary about this fascinating that these people think that they're right so i mean it, totally bought it i think it's just i can't i cannot imagine I said to Chloe, your headspace that they, would make you. They know, this. right, that the satellites are real out in outer space that have taken pictures of the very, very round mm -hmm. Earth and all of the other planets mm -hmm. around it. Yep, they know that. So, and they don't believe it anyway. Um, so Rachel could have a whole conversation with these flat Earth people just for the sake of having the conversation. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I don't. I do not have that desire. That is not a preference in my mind. Although I don't know, you could sit down and discuss. Philosophy, you love doing that. Stuff. I could philosophy or employment law are the two things that See, I see. It's just finding the thing. Yeah. Um, so anyway, if if you're an independent and you think, "Gee, I must be a weirdo because I don't have a huge tribe um, or a lot, or I don't like to go discuss random stuff with random people," you're not. Or an organ, if you're an organizer too, self on the self driven side, you're not a weirdo. Uh, you just are not team driven and that's okay. You still have your people you seek out like I Have my people and if I don't have my people around me, I go find people When I if I'm home alone for a weekend, which doesn't happen very often anymore But if I'm home alone for a weekend I have my my whole entire schedule is jam-packed with plans with all of the people that I love There just aren't very many of them and I don't seek out public spaces where there are random people, because I don't like any of those people in my mind. <laughs> not mean to them, generally, unless they deserve it. <laughs> anyway, let's not go down that rabbit hole. All right, what are some of the questions that we got asked this week? Uh, should we go from the bottom up? Um, sure. So, are there any indicators or red flags that suggest someone isn't a good coworker mm -hmm. or business partner for you? Well, I have a couple of thoughts about that, because I saw something on LinkedIn today that made me think of this question. <laughs> Because we actually do prepare and looked at the questions earlier today, even though it might not seem like that's the case. But a couple things. First of all, if there's a red flag, the first place I would honestly look is culture type differences. Because that usually means that you just have a different way of seeing the world. And if you could understand their culture type perspective versus yours, that's that literally, it's crazy. It solves immediately many, many, many uh, problems in just communication and how you work together. Um, whether, Most of those problems, I would add, are really in your head. You know, right. because if you believe in Mad Hatter principle and understand culture types, it really stops all of that chatter in the back of your head, stops most of it, where you think, mm -hmm. is this person doing this just to be bug me to bug me? me crazy of course not and then you use a culture types and say oh well no this is really their perspective mm -hmm. yeah but there are other things that are out of your control for instance we're working with a CPA firm and the way that um, the organization is structured it actually creates a lot of um, chaos feeling in the team well all the CPA staff are organizers and so what happens is those those order people are in a chaotic organization and that makes them act crazy. It makes them anxious, it makes them behave, the behavior is weird, people leave. There's a lot of, and so sometimes if you're more tolerant of that chaos and your neighbor isn't, then that might create a conflict because they start acting like a crazy person and you're like, what is your problem? And so sometimes it's, but also understanding their culture type and you say, okay, they're going a little nuts because the environment is chaotic, I can at least understand them and give them a little grace and say, hey, you know, how can I help with what's going on and, and give, you know, try to help with that part of it. Um, there are people that are hard to get along with. There's no doubt about that. We, um, we coach and support people all the time that literally make other people's lives miserable. So we get that. And sometimes those people are in positions of power and you can't do much about that either. Um, but the one thing I did see today that echoes what you said earlier was there was a quote on LinkedIn, I think from Jeff Hazlett about his hero book. Um, he said something like when you're moving, like when you're screaming forward with your life, like he was talking about growing your business. Right. But, um, but if, when you're like just moving a mile, a million miles an hour, like we do, and like you probably do in your day to day life. His, his feeling is you just got to go with your gut sometimes. You just got to like, 
you don't have time to do the due diligence and the time, the months and all the things like sometimes you just got to just make a call and fix problems and move forward or, or just listen to yourself. Look for red flags. If you have them, just assume they're correct and respond to them the way that that is appropriate. And then you can get out um, or keep, keep moving forward. Did you find it? Oh, no, looking for it? I quit looking, quit looking for it. So, you know, that's a big part of it is the nice thing is, is, giving yourself the tools of culture types and understanding the change transition models and how people deal with chaos and all that stuff that it gives you a lot of insight. But frankly, um, if you can't seem to figure out how to man navigate that relationship or how to connect with it in a way that's going to serve you, then I would just go through gut feel on it and not, not engage. Right. So the, the, um, since the question is, um, isn't a good coworker or business partner for you. Um, I would say um, if you're talking um, business is stressful and in a, in a time when if you're just sitting around in a non-stressful time and you're getting red flags, guess what? Those flags are going to get a lot bigger when the stress gets amped. Right. And fire. Right. And so just be aware that when you aren't, uh, when you're not in a stressful situation and you have a red flag, I, listen to it because your gut's trying to tell you something. So, I mean, that would be, I guess, just a basic, if you don't have time to, if you don't, if you can't figure out what the disconnect is or you can't figure out what this negative feeling is, just pay attention to it and make sure that you listen to it, I guess. Yeah. Um, a couple things I would add to that. Once you've sort of identified these gut feel red flags and you are thinking, uh, I don't know what to do here or some things are really obvious, right? Like a person doesn't ever show up for work or something like that. It's like, okay, well, you clearly are not interested in what's going on here. Most of the time, it's not really that obvious. And that's why we have a lot of heartburn about it because it's like, I can't tell what's going on here. Um, and so once you've sort of identified that gut feel, be brave enough to ask the questions. Oh yeah, that's and, huge. And it doesn't matter huge, if this huge, person huge. is your colleague and you don't have any authority over them. It doesn't matter if you are their supervisor, but you're nervous that they're going to, it doesn't matter what the relationship is. You owe it to that person and to yourself and to the organization you work for, whether you are self-employed or work for someone else to know what's going on. We are all adults here. And frankly, sometimes we should act more like six-year-olds because if one six-year-old was on the playground and looked at another six-year-old and said, I don't like the color blue and you have a blue shirt, so I don't like you, the other six-year-old would be like, what? That seems dumb. Do you want to be friends anyways? Like, let's talk about it. So invoke your <laughs> inner six-year-old and just Take ask your the filter. question. <laughs> yeah. And, and I will tell you, because I think people, it, Seems easier said than done, and frankly, it is. Uh, Rachel and I have had some pretty frank discussions in our working history, and said, "What is your attitude about her? I am not under. I am picking up some weird vibes. Doesn't seem normal. What's going on? Or let's talk about it. Or we're probably both stressed about this thing. Let's just let's just say the words out loud, and then we can move on from it. So, be brave enough to have a conversation with someone if there's weirdness. Um. The other thing, uh, showing my HR bone here. Is that where it is? Yeah, it's right here. That's the HR bone? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. On my left arm. Left arm only? Not to be confused with this. This, is my, bone? this is my running bone. Oh, I would think that would be down there. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, from an HR perspective, from a good business perspective, but I, get, I, I gleaned this from my HR experience, Document, document, document. If you've got someone um, who's got either strange tendencies that you can't quite sort out um, and or performance issues, write it down. And when I say document, that sounds very formal, like, of course, you're getting ready for a lawsuit. Yikes. It doesn't have to be that. It can be in the journal next to the page where it says what people you like and don't like. Um, or who are in your tribe and not in your tribe. That's what I meant to say. Freudian slip. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know what Meg's profile system is. I like you. I don't like you. <laughs> it's very black and white. Anyway, um, write things down. Make sure it's dated. Um, make sure you use explicit <laughs> in case you are going to get sued. Make sure it's dated. Make sure you use explicit names. Rachel said on January 25th, 
2019, that whatever thing. Um, so it's important to write those things down, not, not only to insulate yourself against potential legal issue, but really and honestly more for when you go to have a conversation with that person, you can say, listen, I'm not making this up. I, I have documented some times that I didn't, you and I were not on the same page and I'm not really sure why that's happening. So I'd like to talk about it. It, it does a couple things. It proves to them that it's important to you and that you're paying attention to it. Um, and it also, because these conversations are nerve wracking and they can make you shake and you don't even want to be talking about it in the first place. So what's the first thing that happens? You forget what the hell you're going to say. So if you have those documents, you can say, well, on this day we talked about this and you seemed really anxious or frustrated and then this happened. And so now let's talk about all those and tell me, tell me what was going on for you. Cause I, I don't want to guess and guess wrong. Um, so really writing things down is super important or send it to yourself in a text, send it to yourself in an email, whatever it is, but keep track of it. Even if you record it, voice record it. Yeah. A lot of times I'll, um, I have a, I had a huge first, binder about how to deal with my, binder. That's right. Oh no, I don't have that kind of space. Um, but let's, let's use Meg as an example. Let's say that she was driving me crazy. I want to kick her out and I had to make sure I was tracking. I had a personal uh, I had a personal situation where I did this. So I was getting texts that I felt like were inappropriate or demonstrated um, a problem that I was trying to resolve. And so I would just screenshot the text, for example. And then I had it in my, I had it stored. So I didn't have to try to recreate it. I didn't have to try to show anybody. I didn't have to try to whatever. That seems like a very depressing topic. So let's talk more about fun fun tribes okay stuff. well you know it's realistic okay <laughs> okay next question her hr bone her hr bone is kind of mean it's pragmatic to use a bob turnus word it's mean it's necessary this sounds like my dad i'd say my dad is a pessimist he said he's a realist so i like this way i like cliff kurtz uh right how do you find a community oh this is the easiest one for you well the it yeah you finding them is easy just shit man search on facebook events near me that's all you really have to do to start right then you find them and then figure out what those people look like and then i would say gut check it for sure like mm -hmm. i'm telling you i've been invited to participate in some groups and i'm like i really appreciate the offer i don't think i fit in here and practice saying that pra practice it practice it practice it because it's, I know, hurt yourself. It's and me. important that you don't show up for things that you're not going to commit to and be God, good at because you will don't. be bad at it. And then people are going to think you're a jerk and you resent it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so. A couple things. If you're like me, and I, people have said that I have this weird uh, networking superpower, but it's really not a superpower. All I do is I, it's not really, it's easy. Because what I do, I have been the person in the room that has been the most awkward person and I'm in the corner and I'm sitting by the food trying to eat trying to have a reason why I'm not talking and thinking oh my god who am I going to talk to oh my god I hate this so much and so what I do is I usually look for the person that looks the most out of place or awkward or wishing they weren't there and then I go up and I say this is how we met <laughs> yeah right probably <laughs> kind of literally and I went up to and I said hi I'm Rachel who are you blah blah, blah. let's have a conversation what do you do like, you know, there's kind of a set thing. And then you, they say two sentences and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more about that. And then you have this conversation. And it's a really easy way because you're helping that person feel comfortable because they're like, oh my God, finally someone's talking to me that's not a weirdo. Don't be a weirdo. I guess that's the first thing. But if you're not into that, which is really intimidating for a lot of people, and I get that, and I've done it when you're, you know, I've been doing it for years and years and years and years and years. And so, and I like it. And so it's easy for me to do. If you hate that stuff, mm -hmm. even though she's amazing at it. Um, when, if you hate that, a lot of times it's easier to go with somebody. So I would say if you're not one to just find, um, you know, the 1 million cups and you want to go or the, the, like uh, in the spearfish community, even though we're a small community, we have women leadership um, events and small business events and you can do all kinds of things to find your people um you know if you don't if you don't like doing that alone uh, then go with a friend like find out what what are they you know well maybe it's us find someone that you want to be around or that you know in in a casual conversation if anyone called, said hey i'd like to go to that win meeting women in networking meeting 
on the 15th. Are you around? Are you going to be there? Sure. I'd, I'd be happy to connect with you if I'm there or whatever, or introduce you to somebody before you get there or whatever. So I think most of us have a lot of empathy for that awkward going somewhere alone and not knowing anyone. So just avoid it. Either go with somebody or call ahead, see who else might be there, ask for an introduction. We do introductions all the time. Um, we have a in part of the Hero Club and other things. Um, so I'll get a request of someone who's like me, and they'll call me and say, hey, will you welcome this new Hero Club person? Tell them what you do and how you do it, and then, you know, kind of connect you before anyone ever shows up in person. So it's definitely a thing that I think most people are willing to support you in if you ask. Yeah. My um, Meg doesn't like networking events secret is that I, compliments are an amazing tool. People really love to talk about themselves. I think I actually said that last week too. Um, and so it's a theme. I, yeah, it is. Uh, I just usually try and find a reason to compliment someone. So I find some woman who's got some badass shoes on or some guy who's dressed real snappy um, or whatever, I think cool haircuts, unique earrings, whatever it is, even if it's, even if you, if you're in a room full of people who are not aesthetically interesting, interesting. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say something mean. I could only think of something mean. So thank you. Aesthetically interesting. Just find someone to be like, Hey man, I really love your cufflinks. Where'd you get those? or whatever, and then it starts a conversation, and people are happy to talk about themselves, and if you're like me, you're happy to listen, because I'd rather listen than talk about myself, um, and so then it works out, and then you get to network, and then they know two people that are there, and they're like, oh, hey, Janice, come here and meet Meg, she loves my cufflinks. Yeah, or you could just say, hey, Bob, I don't know anyone else here, could you introduce me to somebody, and they'll be happy to do it promise. Um, you know, these are, and you know, people at the end of the day, humans are humans and they might not be your people. I mean, that's the other thing to be aware of. Like if you hang out with a group and you're like, uh, if it's not just a, Oh my God, I hate meeting people. And so I'm never going back there. There is another group that I'm a member of that I've just decided they're not my people. And, um, I just, I don't go to the meetings. I don't, I'm a member sort of because I'm a member of something else. And so it sort of, I sort of, sort of comes with this other membership. I'm just like, no, I'm not going to go that to that because those aren't my people. And so it's really important to feel that out to, uh, to try to get past the nervousness of joining the group to see who they actually are. And, and if you think about that way, I love meeting people. I love finding out what they're about and what drives them and, what connects us that way. And so that's really how you can tell a lot of times if they're your people. Like um, this one, this one group I'm in is a lot of people that feel a little desperate, like they're not quite making it, you know, I'm like, uh, that is not who we are. And so I don't want a, that energy around me. Like I don't like that sort of needy energy. And so I just, I just decided that it's not, it's not, it's not necessarily the programming or what the opportunities are. It's just that those people just don't have the, the feel of the people I want to be around. So you got to, you got to try to self evaluate on that too. Maybe that's where journaling can come in. Yeah. I think so. All right. Um, okay. Last one, last most important question of the day or most, um, interested voted, voted on, uh, what are some tools you both employ to make sure that RGI stays on the same team? Well, um, I guess really the thing that seems to help us the most is um, I, I can always, we can always tell when we haven't actually been around each other for a while. Cause even though we try and stay connected and keep each other up to date and Bob up to date on the things, the things when we're traveling, it's just hard to keep in that mind space. And even, and you, it seems like you're, even when you're on a phone call, it's in between two things always. Um, and so being either around each other um, or like in Bob's case or in our case with Bob, um, he's physically in a different location. We have committed to having a daily stand-up meeting where as much as possible, if we can be camera ready um, or not, or not, but we talk to each other every day and we, it's not for a long time. It's for 15 minutes. We each have five minutes to say it's about a half hour, but yeah. Yeah. So a celebration, what you're working on, what your barriers are. Um, and then any highlight topics that we all need to discuss, but 
when possible, we join uh, via video yeah, so that we can see difference. each other's eyeballs and faces and reactions and whatever's. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, and, and I think the other thing, this has always served me in my life, um, and people think I'm crazy. This is the one thing that people are like, wow, you're really bold. I just, man, I just ask people questions. I'm just like, what is going, what's your problem? What's my problem? What's your problem with me? What's our pro? Whatever it is, just ask the question. The, you know, I mean, the, uh, the ugly feelings around that, it's kind of like labor for those of you who are females um, or whatever painful thing men go. Oh, man flu. It's kind of like man flu. Uh, you know, like after a certain period of time, you sort of forget how much it hurt and your brain does it on purpose so you can do it again. Same thing with human interactions. Like it'll hurt for a minute to say, you know, Rachel, I'm just getting some weird vibes from you. Can we just talk about it for 15 minutes? Because um, our relationship is more important than whatever those feelings are. Uh -huh. And then you have the conversation and then it's over and you forget about it. Those feelings, you forget about those feelings. So just and, do and, it. Yeah. And know that we see this all the time, both with our, with ourselves and with clients all the time that people, including you hate walking around on eggshells. They hate the awkward tension. They hate the weird feeling. And so Asking the question is a hard thing to do, but once you ask the question and actually expose the issue that's happening, it's amazing how quickly things turn because nobody likes it. Everyone hates it, but no one really wants to take the first step. They're afraid, feels awkward, feels hard. It is hard. It's very courageous. You know, the other, the other thing about it is the uh, Mad Hatter principle, right? You got to give each other some grace. Um, we, you know, we have a lot of trust. We don't, um, you know, we don't log our, do, like, we don't write down every 15 minutes of what we do and how we do it and what does it look like and what are we doing. There's a lot of trust in, okay, here's what, here's what your job is. Okay, go away and do it. Okay, here's you, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Okay, go away. And then things get done. Um, and so there's a lot of trust there. And um, I was listening to a quote the other day. It was something like, Tr uh, trust isn't really trust. It's, um, believing that you're competent and reliable. And so when competence and reliability fail with one of those things fail, then you lose trust. And so that's the, those are the pieces that are really interesting. And so a lot of times when Meg and I have these weird tension things, it's not really, um, to do with a trust thing, really. It's more to do with, we just haven't connected. And so it's really fast. It's amazing how fast you can get like a little unconnected or even just like sort of at odds slightly, even though it's not a big deal, whatever it is. And so it is really hard. And so you have to kind of give each other grace. Like, oh my God, next drive be insane right now. But I know in two days when I see her in person, we'll talk and we'll sort it out and it'll be fine. And so that's part of it too, right? It's that sort of, you know, it'll all work out in the long run. And so these little, you know, ups and downs are going to be um, dealt with if you have the, if you have that sort of trust established. So, so yeah, I think those are the tools. Any other tools we use practically? Um, I guess like real life tools, um, Google Hangouts, we mm -hmm. talked to, talked about video talk with Bob. And so the tool that we use uh, in the G Suite is Google Hangouts. Mm -hmm. um, and we use that both for like almost like instant messenger for those of us who are old enough to know what that is. Um, and then uh, we do the video calls. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, text messages, mm -hmm. a lot. The phone, a lot. Yep. Um, I, don't, I guess I think those are all the just trying to, real tool tools. Yep, yeah, just trying to stay connected. We use Zoom a lot with clients that are far away, um, that are are removed from our physical location, which is a lot. Um, so yeah, so we use video a lot um, in a lot of different ways. So yeah, yeah. I, don't, I guess I don't think we use any other tools to stay connected. Not directly. We hug. I got a kiss earlier. It's nice. Cheek kiss. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. Business partners. <laughs> Not life partners. Not life partners. Not life partners. All, All right. right. Well, I think that's it. Okay, I think that's it. So try to, to sum. Super important who you're hanging out with. If you're hanging out with people that bring you down, find people that will lift you up. I think that's the summary. 
I, I would say that is the summary. And and don't you you will be your own worst en enemy. Man, words today. You will be your own worst enemy in thinking that telling yourself that your gut is wrong. So no, this person has been by my side and supporting me for a whole a long time, your whole life, for 10 years of your life. But man, you do, if your gut is saying, eh, not right now or not in that capacity, then either have that conversation with that person or just don't hang out with them. Oh, that was another thing I thought about earlier today or earlier in the conversation. In this. Mm -hmm. um, like, how do you actually break up with someone in your life? Um, I, what has worked for me in the past? I so there's I've had a couple of experiences where one was this person just was toxic and not serving me anymore, and I just quit talking to them. Just I just quit talking to them. I just decided I'm gonna quit talking to you and see what happens. And if that person was gonna come back into my life and serve me in a good way, and I could do the same for them, then great. And if not, then not. Um, it was if not and. So be it. Um, another person who was really important to me, but I just, the person I was telling you about earlier that I was talked to on a daily basis, I, I had a conversation with that person. I just said, I just, I can't talk to you every day. Uh, the, our conversations do not serve me. I need more optimism or more whatever I thought I needed. Um, and they said, you know what? I understand you're one of my good best pals and I'm not going to give up on you, but I will certainly give you the space that you need. And we're still really good friends and chat, not on a daily basis, but we chat often. Um, and so it, it re you can break up with someone. There's a couple different ways to do it. Um, you either just quit talking to them or um, tell them what you got going on and then see what they say. Mm -hmm. So that was my last, I had that thought earlier. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Well, um, lead powerfully. Change the world. Bye. Bye. Good to see you.